guys, this is Megan from You Go To Be Kidding. Today we are out here to give an update on our meat chickens. So we have the first batch of the year uh, out on pasture. We took them out of the barn a few days ago. So I want to show you our setup, how we uh, raise them and how um, easy it's been for us. As you can see, this is our Joel Salatin style chicken tractor. We got the design out of Polyface Designs. I'll put a link down below. Uh, it has all of the designs that Joel uses on Polyface Farms. And so um, this one is eight by eight foot instead of Joel's 12 by 12 foot, just because this is easier to move um, and we're not running quite as many chickens. I'll zoom in here. So it has two removable lids. Now this one actually our friends built for us as an investment in chickens so that way we could run more we do have a second one as well that we used last year um, and we will get both of them going so we can do more chickens this year so inside the tractor we have these two lids here uh, one has the the roofing panels for shade and then the other one just has the netting so you can see inside the two panels lets us get in and get them out when it's time to butcher we don't have a tray feeder or anything so we, we just use the, the little one um, we come and shake down this the one disadvantage of these circle feeders is the food kind of gets stuck in them so we're coming out here to shake them um, that is something we need to fix this time around but it works I've got kids they can come out and shake it down if you are looking to build one of these tractors for yourself um, I do highly recommend following Joel's plans he has the time and the experience put in to knowing uh, how to build these in a way that they're easy to move. So number one, I know we always talks about is keeping them light. So we have just used scrap wood, which saves a ton of money. Um, these are some old deck boards and we just rip them down. We don't use the full width, make them as small as you can, um, that they'll be strong enough, but that they'll stay light enough for you. Um, then we actually made some modifications. We tried to put some tires on this one and we've just done it Recently, we'll see how that goes for us. We'll talk about it an update at the end of this cycle and see if that's been worth it. Um, and the most important thing to make sure you get, if you get one of these feeders or one of these tractors, if you have meat chickens, is uh, the Bell Waterer. So the Plasson Broiler Drinker. It caught with uh, shipping, it cost almost $70. And that was a a heavy pill to swallow but we bought it last year and I'm so thankful um, it has a float inside it and it weighs it down so as it fills the the rim then the water inside the rim weights it down and then stops it and so then I just have this five gallon bucket right here that is full of water and it auto fills it all throughout the day and so we don't have to refill that we check it in the afternoons um, and as they get bigger um, sometimes we'll have to add water by the end of the day but that five gallon bucket absolutely lasts them all day and that is a huge blessing especially in summer having water on hand for chickens is a really big deal the construction on these is pretty simple. It's basically just a box with a bunch of triangle support frames. So you build the left hand side, put a middle bracket, and then have the support beams up to the right. And you really just repeat that four times over and you just cross all the panels. We have the back open there uh, for airflow and then the roofing on the side for more protection. You can see we've hung the water in the middle and we move these guys each morning. My husband gets up and moves them before he goes to work each day. And then we just check on the food throughout the day to make sure they're getting enough of it. All right, it's a pretty simple setup. These guys are getting ready to go. We have some layers in here. You can see some barred rocks walking around. Um, so we have, we're raising them all up together and then we'll separate out the layers as it gets closer to butcher date. But all these guys can fit in here. We have I think there's just shy of 50 birds in here right now and obviously as they get bigger we'll need to pull them out but the laying hens forage so much better we don't have to worry so much about the food competition the laying ones are definitely you know they don't even go up to the food bowl as much they just eat the grass you see them using the water These tractors are just such a simple solution to having birds on grass and not having to worry about predators or them getting out or moving fences. Just move them around. And then they're all safe. They like to cuddle back in the corners there. And one other modification we made this time is we added short axles to the bottom here. Uh, they're just attached to the framing with um, like those U or those C-shaped pipe clamps. 
it's just sticking out a little bit. We're using a piece of garden hose as a spacer. And then we're putting these old uh, tires off of our gorilla cart. Uh, we swapped them out for the tires that won't go flat on our actual cart. And so my husband just pulls it up, sticks it on that little piece of axle, and then is able to wheel it. So we have one in the back um, on each side. He's able to lift it up. The only disadvantage is it does lift it up high enough that the little chickies can get out behind it but I think that will stop. So it lifts up the back here and the little guys fit underneath it sometimes, but even the meat chicks are big enough to, to go along with it and he's able to kind of get them back in as he's pulling the tires back off. It's not like it's squishing them because the tires are holding it up. Um, so it is a little bit of a logistic thing. I'll have to, we'll give you an update at the end of our season, whether it was worth it. Uh, I think so. I think it's helping move it. Makes it a lot easier to be a one man job. We don't have, um, the official Joel Salatin moving dolly. So we don't yet have a welder that is on our homestead list is a welder, but that's not something we have right now. So we're trying to make do with some tires. And that's why we also kept it smaller, the eight by eight dimension instead of 12 by 12. One part of moving the chickens, which is both fascinating and gross, is the trail they leave behind. So we've just started out here uh, this week. So you can see right behind the chicken tractor here, all the grass is eaten down. There's a lot of chicken poop there. Um, and then there's a line where they started. And what will happen over the next few weeks is that as that grass grows back, this section will be several shades darker than the rest of the grass around it. That chicken manure, is the best fertilizer around. So we try to run this in an area here that seems to be the, the worst part of our pasture. Um, we'll, we'll probably run them all different areas this year. We're gonna do four or five batches of them. So um, this is what we've got set up and got started. So these Cornish cross will grow up. We can butcher them in just eight weeks. And that is why we've chosen them as a breed. You can choose some of the other breeds, uh, but they take longer to grow out. And with the cost of feed rising um, it makes even more sense for us to do these Cornish cross um, one thing I've heard a lot that they're you know a weird chicken or that they've been modified and all they are is a cross breed so yes they are bred to grow very quickly um, and you can't keep them longer you do have to butcher them or they're gonna run into leg problems um, once you get past that eight week mark but there's nothing they're not modified like genetically <laughs> So they're just a chicken. They're just a crossbreed that has been selectively bred like your Chihuahua or your Great Dane um, in order to get the traits that we want. And that's growing quickly and growing fast. Um, these ones are from McMurray Hatchery. We had a bad shipment to the first batch, uh, but our post office actually never called us. And so we got them late and the replacement order came in and we have just picked them up first thing when the post office opens and we have had great success with them there and we actually have our second batch in the brooder ready to go so I'll show them to you but these little guys are in here getting bigger and loving life on grass barn we're having a party in the barn so donkey came down to say hi with baby um, because we are always moving our goats around it is a turn for the goats to be in the barn the goats and the sheep are together uh, and they have access to back behind the barn. We have River in her kennel. She has been such a good girl. She is hanging out here with the sheep and goats. And in our stall here, we have our chickens. So this is batch number two. Hello, little chickies. I always love to get on top of this brooder. That's okay. Um, so this is 35 more meat birds and McMurray always sends a free surprise chick and it's funny, you can tell, can, can you spot the different one? <laughs> uh, we're excited to see what kind of chicken it is. We have no idea, they don't actually tell you, so it'll be fun to watch as they get older. But round two is in the works. Thanks for watching, guys. We hope that you go out and are encouraged to raise your own food, plant something, grow something. Uh, we hope you have a great day.